Okay, go ahead, Craig. Okay, I'm Craig Doyle. I'm a native of Texas. I'm a fourth generation McDermott County resident. I graduated from Conroe High School. Put myself through Texas A&M with a uh, roofing business. I got a degree in geology. So I, I had that roofing business for 25 years. So I understand what it means to build a small business and, and maintain that, make payroll, pay your bills, and try to grow a business and a family as well. Um, I ran for county commissioner in 1986. The best thing that happened was that I didn't win. Ended up going to work for Malcolm Purvis, and I served 15 years as the administrative assistant to Commissioner Purvis. Uh, he passed away in 2001. I was appointed to fill the balance of his term. Ran in 2002, was elected to the position of county commissioner, and have been unopposed there since then. In my tenure as county commissioner, I represented Montgomery County at HGAC. Uh, I did that for nine years. Uh, HJC is a 13 county region that the direct support of state and federal dollars go to within the region. Served my last uh, term there as the chairman of HJC, elected by that body. Uh, commissioners and county judges from across that region and mayors from the large cities and representatives, representatives from different districts there. Uh, I served the county as a representative to the Transportation Policy Council, which is an eight county region that determines where state and federal funding goes for highway projects within the region. I currently serve as Montgomery County's representative to the Gulf Coast Rail District, uh, looking at freight rail and, and uh, commuter rail issues across the region. And I chair the 1420 committee, which is the uh, committee that's been put together to look at funding options for the Grand Parkway segments H and I, which such as a little piece of Montgomery County, a small piece of Harris County, and then a large piece of Liberty and Chambers County. And uh, the, the members of that board elected me chairman of that, that board, so we're looking for those funding options. I've been a board member on the Montgomery ISD uh, School District Board. Uh, I've been a real volunteer for many, many years. I was president of the Magdalene Parks Chamber for a long time. I'm a member of all four uh, the local chambers in Conroe, South County, uh, Magnolia, and Magnolia Parkway Chamber in, in my area. A lifetime member of the Montgomery County Fair Association, and I've been involved in county government for quite some time. I've watched this county grow for a long time. And I'm excited about being a part of a lot of the transportation programs that we've, we've put together. The pass through program that brought us to widening in 13, 14, 1485, 1484, certainly 1488, and now the flyovers at 242 and 45. I've uh, been to TxDOT numerous times to testify before the Highway Commission, I've been to Austin to testify before the legislature on issues that relate to Montgomery County. Working in partnership with a lot of different organizations like Commissioner Cagle. Uh, we're working on a program right now on 249 to <coughs> bring the main lanes of 249 from Harris County through Montgomery County. We work with uh, Judge Shiflett over in Grimes County to go to Austin to testify before the Highway Commission to get funding on that project as a, as a, as a coalition of the three counties, uh, chamber members, business people, Developers that have right of way access through that uh, through that corridor, and actually got TxDOT to fund 350 million dollars of that project to create what's been long talked about as the Aggie Freeway from from Houston to College Station. We're back to we'll tie in right there, just the side of Minnesota that will create a corridor through the western part of Magnolia or through the western part of Montgomery County, all the way into Grimes County and on to Brazos County, which will open up development for that 1486 area. There's about 12,000 acres out there that's owned by different developers. An area about half the size of the woodlands with no I-45 to it that this corridor will open up tremendous development for our county on the far west side. So been involved in a lot of transportation projects, uh, a lot of the uh, abatement in initiatives that have brought business like Anadarko and CBI and McKesson and Royal Purple here to McDermott County and been excited to be a part of all that for quite some time. I'm married, have three children, have one grandchild, Seven-year-old granddaughter. That if you, if you ever look at Facebook, I'm sure you'll find a picture of her. There's a bunch of them out there. <laughs> I'm very proud of, of, of all my family. And three children. Three. Yes. And <coughs> Just one. Okay. I have a son that's uh, 30 years old. He's in Austin. He's uh, graduated from University of Texas, which is pretty tough. One. Were you disappointed at that? Well, every time I wrote a check, I rang tightened up a notch. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm very, very proud of the fact that he's he's, he's done well. He's, Got a degree in computer science and in, in the IT industry and doing quite well. Middle daughter lives with, with my wife and I. And my youngest is at 
the University of Houston right now in her, her uh, junior year. Oh, okay. All right, great. I appreciate the opening. This is Ken Vaughn. Uh, Hi, how are you? And actually, all these names on here, I don't know if you got to remember Larry, Ken, James, <coughs> me. Dale, Dennis, Pat, and John. Um, okay, so what we'll do is, is um, we're going to go around the room and um, uh, give everybody a chance to ask at least one question. Uh, maybe probably a couple of us will kick it off with you. You have up to two minutes to answer. Okay. Okay. On the questionnaire, uh, now at the bottom on the first page, the one, two, and three fulfilling obligations. Uh, on number two, he said that rapidly growing county by streamlining services and leveraging the dollars we have available. Uh, give me a, your definition of leveraging the dollars. What does that mean? Well, when, when I talk about that, I'm talking about specifically related to transportation projects. We're working with the Westwood Improvement District and the county provided right of way on uh, the extension of research forest, and we partnered with the Improvement District to do the construction of that road. So we didn't have any county dollars in the construction phase of that. We also are partnering with the Improvement District on the a widening of Fish Creek Thoroughfare from 1488 up to Sendera Ranch. And we've got the right of way there. We're, we provided some funding in there, about $600,000. They're providing about $2 million worth of funding for that project. So where we can where we can leverage our county dollars with other entities and make our dollars go as far as we possibly can to meet the needs of, of mobility and certainly other issues as we grow, I think we need to do that. Same thing we did with the, the pass-through program with TxDOT, and we leveraged $100 million in, in county funding to $300 million worth of projects with TxDOT, where we partnered with different uh, different organizations. We're partnering with Harris County on the construction of 249 to try to leverage our dollars with Harris County dollars to get 249 constructed. We have an MOU where they've agreed to lend us $20 million for the upfront funding on that project. So leveraging our county dollars with every other entity and Possibility that we can. Okay. You want to introduce? Yeah, you want to, yeah. yeah. This is this is Joe Williams, and Joe is working yes. with me on the campaign. And if, if it's okay for him to be here today, that's sure. No, no problem, Joe. You can see him. Might seat. get a chair from Steve's office, right? Uh, I think yeah. they're all. I think they're all close Oh. Uh, okay. okay. Um. Um. So I live along kind of Fish Creek Parkway. Yes, sir. Which is uh, you know now connected through which really changed the, the environment of that roadway quite a bit. Correct. Um, there's been some accidents along there. Uh, the speed limits along there vary from 35 to 45, yet in portions, a lot of people try 50 or more. Right. Um, so how do we take care of this, providing the transportation needs, but yet providing safety as well? Well, the, re the reason we left the, the speed limits at different levels <coughs> in different areas is 35 miles an hour through that residential portion of Cinder and Ranch, mm -hmm. where you have driveways that, that actually uh, Approach on to Fish Creek Thurf. Mm -hmm. It's at 45 once you cross the bridge where you're more open mm -hmm. in that boulevard section. We, we work with the Sheriff's Department every day to try to help them and, and notify them where areas are problematic. We created a unit, uh, I think it's been about four years ago. It's a motorcycle unit that's specifically designed to operate within subdivisions mm -hmm. uh, so that they can go to those hot spots. It's only dedicated for traffic enforcement. Uh, and so whenever we get issues where we have an area that uh, we have multiple complaints or, or multiple issues where we see speeding is a problem, I can call the Sheriff's Department and they'll dispatch those motorcycle units out and write a few tickets and that generally tends to slow them down for as long as those individuals are there, as long as those officers are there. And, and were those speed limits set by the state engineers? Or were they that, set? That they're set by the county and, and through our county engineering office. We do it. Well, we do a, a warrant study. Mm -hmm. Anytime we construct a roadway, there's a warrant study done, and they'll them up or make recommendation on speed limits based on a, a multitude of criteria that the engineering firm or the engineering office deals with. Okay, so so you're saying you do have a vote into what that speed limit is, or yeah, we, we, we certainly have input, and they've okay. got some criteria so, that they'll make recommendations by. So, so what was the recommendation from the engineering? It, to leave it at 35 miles per hour through the residential area through Sendera Ranch and put it at 45 okay. up to the north. So have you ever 
not taking their recommendation? In, in some cases, we've actually lowered the speed limit where we've had requests from residents to lower the speed limit in a certain area, if it makes sense. Sometimes you can post a speed limit so low that people are going to ignore it altogether and it makes it even worse. So you have to be within some some range of common sense there. Okay. okay. Jay? <clears throat> um, what, when you started out talking about the HGAC, the Texas DOT, and all of that, mm -hmm. I mean, that's all very important stuff we're very interested in. What that we've, well, I'm <clears throat> speaking for myself. What I've seen, though, uh, and I haven't been here anywhere near as long as you, I'm with an oil and gas company like a lot of people in our county, but we've been up here like 10 years. Mm -hmm. But uh, what we've seen, particularly like with the last bond issue, mm -hmm. there was only one commissioner that I think that actually presented a road plan. But even, even ignoring that, or allowing for that, it does appear that every precinct has been run pretty much as a fiefdom. That only, we only worry about what our precinct cares about, but like you were talking about in your opening, there's other counties in the area, there's the whole big state of Texas we have to think about. So my question is, as county judge, because now we realize you're, you're really just one vote on the board, but you are, you are the judge, Correct. and we are putting in a total of three new people this you know this election what can you do or will you do as county judge uh, to change this little fiefdom uh, where we actually have some coordination we act like a county that actually has a lot of growth on this board great, great question and that's the, that's what I, I can see my role as and, and, and I don't think that there I don't know that there's ever been a county judge that's been elected from a commissioner precinct uh, no, no commissioners ever become county judges, and, and it puts me in a very, very unique position to understand what the needs of those commissioners are. Having been there for 12 years, and with new commissioners coming on board, I think it's, it'll be imperative that, that I'll be able to use the experience that I've gained, use the, the, the relationships that I've built to, through other counties, through TxDOT, through other entities that we deal with on a, on a regular basis, to help guide them and, and help assist them in meeting the needs in their precinct. I've been focused mostly on precinct two in terms of what we do day to day, 1488, Fish Creek, 1774, and other projects. But I can take that experience and that knowledge and help the new commissioners as they start to identify problem areas in their precinct. Well, on the planning, because even, even on that bond, the $2 million bond, it was going to be divided up four ways. Well, that certainly doesn't mean there's any sort of regional planning. Are you going to be pushing the commissioners to forget about this, you each get your piece of the pie. Let's talk about what the county needs and how we fit with the yeah. state. Yeah, we're in the process right now of doing a, a revisitation of our major thoroughfare plan. And we've updated mm -hmm. that major thoroughfare plan since 1985 a couple of times with just minor tweaks. Uh, uh, HGAC is doing a full-blown review of that major thoroughfare plan with input from the city of Conroe from each of the precincts so that we can identify mm -hmm. the major thoroughfare corridors that we have, identify those that we feel like we may need into the future, and then set a priority status on those as dollars become available so that we know where we need to guide and direct those dollars to meet mobility needs countywide. How far, do, uh, how long a plan do you think is, is needed? How far out? Oh, I, I would say to at least 2035. Because right now, the traffic here is horrendous, but then east side of the county, that's going to be facing the same thing Raver, in a few Raver short Road. years. Sure, Raver Road is an issue. That... Okay, Dale. Yeah. Well, thanks. <coughs> okay. <coughs> when you talk about the regional plan, were you talking about the HGAC plan, or are you talking about something that's a Montgomery County plan? I'm talking about the, the major thoroughfare plan being a Montgomery County plan that HGAC is assisting us with. I think it's important that we identify, you know, we're, I, I've watched this county go from a little over 100,000 people to 500,000. In the next 15 to 20 years, we're supposed to, we're predicted to be at a million. And what that means is every car you passed on the way here today, you can double that. At least. Every yeah. subdivision you've seen as you drive home today, you can double that. And if we don't have a plan in place to prepare for that, for that kind of growth, then, then we're in trouble. We'll be at gridlock. Okay. We, now you also made a, I mentioned in your opening comments about the uh, the road, the Aggie Parkway. Mm -hmm. um, my understanding from what I've read, that's intended to be a tollway. Correct. And yet you said that TxDOT contributed three hundred and fifty million. Yes. Do you see that as kind of a problem to have a tollway and then have 
taxpayer funds being well, the we seed pay money for it or whatever? Twice. Well, what, yeah. well TxDOT is going to put $350 million into that project, which will in no way pay for all of it. But what, that's their, the total value? Their, their, the portion that they're talking about, well, the whole thing's about $800 million. They're talking about uh, putting $350 million in there to defray some of the need for the tolls. So the tolls will make up the balance on that construction cost. Mm. I, I don't think you can do, you'd never get the whole thing built out of available dollars. When you say <clears throat> total 800, is that the projected where it's going into Grimes County? Yeah, that, and well, then that's they're the, only funding 350 of that? Yeah, or is funding, that going to be segments? They're funding three, they're picking it up. We're, <coughs> Harris County is going to build it from Spring, Spring Cypress, Cypress where it stopped, where the main lane stopped, up to Spring Creek, which is the border between Harrison and Montgomery County. We'll, we'll take it from there to either Pinehurst or 1488. We're still looking at the options there, depending on what the traffic and revenue studies say. We're not sure how far Montgomery County is going to carry that. And the textile will pick it up from 1488 to just this side of Navasota, where it'll tie into 105 and Highway 6 and <coughs> Navasota, or onto College So it won't be freeway all the way to Agland? No, it won't be free. It'll, it'll be a toll facility, certainly through No, I meant freeway. freeway. Interstate. Type. No, no, no. Once no, it gets no. to Navasota, it's it's back to the existing road. It'll go back into once once it gets to just this between about where 362 hits, just the side of Navasota between Pine or Plantersville and Navasota. It'll tie into 105, and they're reconstructing 105 right now in a Super Two configuration, which has you know passing lanes, alternate passing lanes in each direction. And it'll then once you hit Highway Six, it'll be okay. a freeway configuration. For that. Yes. <coughs> okay. Well, just a, a brief question on that one. If uh, the government is going to have a plan where users pay a part of it and taxpayers pay the rest of it, isn't that clearly a socialist business model? Well, taxpayers are paying for something that benefits a special group. Well, they're paying for what would benefit the traveling public. <coughs> paying tolls. Yeah, well, the users of the road. It That's forces right. half the people to pay for a toll even though they have no plan to use the road. <coughs> I, don't, I wouldn't call it a socialist mm -hmm. program. You know, Tex Dots, their 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 job is to build those highways for us, and they don't have enough money to construct them fully. So they're going to construct them as far as they can with the dollars that they have, and then we'll have to use the tolls on them to construct the back. Well, three fifty would build some roads that the f public could use for free. Yeah, that it would. But, but anyway, real, real quickly, will, how how far will three fifty? That's a good yeah. question. How far will three fifty take it? Will it go oh, to I, Spring I, Creek? I, I don't know if they're using that 350 in a specific segment or in the total overall of the project. Oh, so where would the toll start, I guess? Well, the tolls would start right where the new lanes will start in Harris County, at Spring Cypress. And, and there'll be a toll facility all the way through. All the way through. Now, TxDOT mm -hmm. may or may not, they're still looking at options uh, on their funding portion, uh, whether they'll be tolled all the way to Navasota or not. Once you hit 105, it will no longer be told because they'll never go back and toll an existing facility. Okay. No, I'll, I'll pick up another question later. Yeah. No. Okay, so do we skip you since you came in to his question? Or <laughs> no, no, no. Let, let John okay. have a shot. No, go ahead, no, John. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> I got lots of questions. Um, Don't we all? <laughs> do you, um, to okay, how do you, how do you define, uh, well, <laughs> what are your thoughts on the grassroots movement, like Tea Party? Well, I mean, obviously, it, it, that's what it takes to get the information out to people that they're, they're voters. You know, I had a fundraiser Thursday night, and we had volunteer cards on the table, and I got a stack of volunteer cards, and those are the people I'm going to rely on for the information that I need to know what their issues are, mm -hmm. and to help me get my message out. I want to hear their message as much as, as I need them to help me spread my Okay. What, um, just a while ago, we're, we're in a really, yeah, I mean, explosive growth. You and I were talking earlier uh, outside that you were a degree geologist, and yet the market had tanked. I, I think probably us oil and gas people in here had had impact from that. I know I was impacted in the 86 and got out of the industry for a while and came back. Uh, people were moving out in the middle of the night in the woodlands. Um, it's, you know, uh, actually, it's pretty bad economic conditions around the country, mm -hmm. except here. here. Uh, we got oil and gas here. Um, not only that, 
we got Exxon Mobil coming in to the area, Southwest Energy, <coughs> and a whole host of feeders, you know, on that. Um, this is the place to come. From this is probably one of the, you know the fastest growing areas in the Houston area and the state and the country and the world. Why do we need abatements to attract people? Well, uh, att attract businesses to an area that we're almost getting to a point of being landlocked around the woodlands area and surrounding areas uh, in Conroe uh, when people are beating our door to get down, you know, down to get in here. Yeah, and they're, and they're coming to this region, to this Houston area, and we compete with Fort Bend County and some others. <coughs> we're going to see a tremendous influx of people here. What I want to make sure we have are the quality jobs that come with that. And so to get people like the Anadarkos and the CBNIs and the McKessons and the Royal Purples for those abatements to bring them to Montgomery County as opposed to Fort Bend County or some other area, Waller County, or where they may be around this Houston market, I want to have them here. You know, because I, I saw a report the other day that said for every dollar generated in residential taxes, there's a dollar sixteen to a dollar twenty cent service requirement. For every dollar generated in commercial taxes, there's a twenty six cent service requirement. So I want to see those businesses here that make sure we have good quality job opportunities for the people that live here in Montgomery County. To, to my way of thinking, it does three things. It broadens that tax base, so it helps lessen the burden, the tax burden on you and I as residential taxpayers. It provides good quality job opportunities for the people that are here, that, that, that have good solid job opportunities. And to a great degree, it provides a traffic mitigation tool. If they can work right here in Montgomery County, they don't have to get on I-45 or 249 or 1488 or 59 to go to into Houston to go to work. If we're a veteran community providing nothing but residential growth, it, it's it's very expensive. So I want those businesses located here for all those reasons. Oh, it just seems I got about 15 seconds. I don't know if you want to follow on that way, but it just seems like you know this is the place to live. Companies are recognizing that they're coming in. I don't know that we necessarily need a baby from that perspective, but uh, anyway, <coughs> my time is up. Right. Um, explain how the court determines the money, which precinct gets what. How does that, how do y'all sit down and determine that you got some money and I need some money in my precinct, <coughs> you needed some money in your precinct? So how do y'all, how do y'all battle that out? The, the precinct has historically been divided just simply almost 25 percent equally. Now there is a little bit of a formula we put in there years ago that took into account the actual road, the lane miles and, so, and bridges that went into the calculation, but it didn't make that much difference. It, it's fairly uh, equitable splits among the precincts. But with the, you know, the Woodlands having the majority of the population concentrated uh, and now uh, East County is going to 